What is up everybody, my name is Boba Talks and welcome to a new Star Wars The Last Jedi video. So if you haven't heard already, Entertainment Weekly got a whole massive scoop on The Last Jedi. This includes new pictures, uh, a lot more new information about just detailing the relationship between Luke and Rey and why Luke even went onto that island and why he feels like he has to stay there. How Rey feels about her first interactions with Luke. It's just all amazing if you're a Star Wars fan. I know there's not so many people on this channel. Uh, watch me for Star Wars, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stop making Star Wars videos because I freaking love it. But either way, I thought I'd break all this information down, the photos. Uh, but first of all, I want to go over what they actually say in the article. There is apparently a few more photos and information to come. Uh, so expect maybe a video or two more in the next couple of weeks on The Last Jedi. Uh, but apart from that, guys, let's get straight into the breakdown of what we have learned. So this is what Daisy Ridley described about how Rey feels about her first interaction with Luke, considering her abandonment abandonment issues anyway uh considering you know her parents left her on Jakku uh, at a very very young age and she had to fight for herself and this is what Daisy Ridley had to say about our first look inside the head of Rey really and what she's feeling uh talking about a little bit about Han Solo oh my god this other man that I lost within a couple of days was somewhat a father figure now he's gone and instead I'm with this grumpy guy on an island who doesn't want me here but this is something we've heard before as well that Rey had kind of placed huge expectations upon Luke because if you remember in The Force Awakens that Luke Skywalker is a ma massive legend to her and a massive kind of myth like is it all real and then Hanzo was like it's all real all of it the Jedi yeah the Force so obviously when she arrives on arc 2 and she meets Luke for the first time and he's like you know why, why the hell are you here you would be a bit like but but you're meant to be Luke Skywalker you're meant to be but what? But from the article in her headspace, she goes to the island not to become like a hero herself. She wants to kind of go there to get Luke Skywalker back in the fight. And then he's just like, why are you here? Why are you bringing this lightsaber to me? And it kind of makes sense what she has to say about it. I don't think one girl who he doesn't know turning up with a lightsaber is going to make him go, oh shit, yeah, of course I'll get back into the action. But in a separate interview, Hamill did tease, but does he not know her? So that's very interesting. I mean, that's an age-old question since The Force Awakens came out. What is Luke's connection to Rey? Does he even know her at all? Or does he know of her at least? But apparently soon we will learn a lot more about that answer in The Last Jedi, which I am so freaking hyped for. I think that's like one huge question apart from Snoke and everything else is like, who the hell is Rey? What is the deal with her? Who were her parents? What? 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 And the Entertainment Weekly cover of Ray is just absolutely superb. I think Daisy Ridley is just, oh man, she's just, no, but seriously, she does look epic with that lightsaber pose with Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber or Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, if you want to call it that. Uh, but the only thing I'm hearing, and I'll get to this on my photo breakdown uh, at the end of this video, where I'll break down a few more of the photos rather than talking just about the article, is that even though these are Star Wars Episode Eight images, it's not like she looks or anyone else really looks much different apart from a couple of photos. Uh, from what we actually saw at the end of The Force Awakens. But either way, I'm happy. It's new kind of material, even though she is primarily dressed in the same stuff. But it's still cool nonetheless. Now, Ryan Johnson talks about why Luke Skywalker is even on that island to begin with, and what he says is very interesting. The very first step in the writing of this was to figure out why he's on that island. We know he's not a coward, he's not just hiding because he's scared, but we also know that he must know that his friends are in danger. He must know that the galaxy needs him, and he's sitting on this island in the middle of nowhere. There had to be an answer. It had to be something where Luke Skywalker believes he's doing the right thing, and the process of figuring out what that is and unpacking it is the journey for Rey. And even though it was really cool to get that insight from the director, Ryan Johnson, it's something that we kind of already knew. We know that a portion of the film is going to be about Rey being a bit annoyed about, you know, meeting her hero isn't always what you would think it would be. Sometimes when you meet your hero, or in this case, when you meet your hero, it's not going to be like, oh my god, you're just like what I thought you would be. It's actually quite opposite. And a significant part of this film is probably going to be about the backstory of that, finding out, Ray finding out why this all happened, why he's on the island. And then they'll probably come together, you know, and all will be kind of okay compared to the very beginning of the film where Luke is just like, why are you here? Please, can you go? I'm here to 
not speak to anyone or be with anyone. And then we're on the part of the article where episode 7 did explain how, you know, Kylo Ren fell to the dark side and killed all of the students at Luke's Jedi Academy. But it didn't explain why Luke isolated himself rather than fighting for the light in his former apprentice or just fighting against him. He just isolated himself and this is what Mark Hamill had to say about that on top of saying that Luke had actually begun to doubt his own connection to the force wondering if he had kind of been misreading it this whole time. Luke made a huge mistake in thinking that his nephew was the chosen one so he invested everything he had in Kylo much like Obi-Wan did with my character and he is betrayed with tragic consequences. Luke feels responsible for that. That's the primary obstacle he has to rejoining the world and his place in the Jedi hierarchy, you know? It's that guilt, that feeling that it's his fault, that he didn't detect the darkness in him until it was too late. I think he probably looks out on the horizon and wishes that he could be more effective, could be what Obi-Wan wanted him to be, but life is imperfect and without conflict there is no drama. And believe me, you're going to see a lot of conflict in The Last Jedi, that is for sure. Now, one thing I want to take away from this is that Luke thought his nephew was the chosen one. Like, what? I, I don't understand that. I don't get why they're saying that, because if anyone... I mean, this is debatable amongst fans, but, you know, technically Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader was still... Uh, the Chosen One, uh, through defeating the Emperor, he did kind of bring balance to the Force. And then some people say Luke Skywalker was the Chosen One because, you know, without him, none of that would have happened still. And he's still technically Anakin's son. So that kind of all makes sense. But even post episode six, when, you know, before Kylo went to the dark side and things were all well, the Rebellion or, you know, the New Republic was a thing. There was no technically dark side that we knew of yet. Um, things were all well. So why did Luke, when he was training Kylo, when Kylo was somewhat good, and Luke, you know, unbeknownst to Luke, he didn't know him, he was bad, why did he think that Kylo was the chosen one? The chosen one for what? Like, there was no bad times ahead, there was no... I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Why would Luke Skywalker think that Kylo Ren, or should I say Ben, before he was Kylo Ren, um, was the chosen one? Because what new prophecy was there... Um, was it still to bring balance to the force? Because at that point, I'm pretty sure in Luke's head, things were fine and dandy. He had a Jedi Academy, he had plenty of students. He invested so much into Kylo, Ben, should I say, um, uh, to the point where he thought he was the chosen one. And because he betrayed him and everything, he isolated himself. I just find it fascinating that Mark Hamill says that Luke Skywalker really, really invested so much into Ben Solo because not only because he was his nephew but because he truly believed that he was the chosen one i mean maybe he's just saying that luke thought he was going to be you know the pinnacle perfect example of uh, a new jedi or the new jedi to come uh coming from luke's new trained students and the, for the first time since yoda's jedi order back in you know before the galactic empire rose but and as for the photos this is what i meant before and what I, quite a lot of people were saying e even though they are technically new uh shots they are kind of not really too like oh my god and fair enough because you know, you don't want to spoil too much of the film through new photos, but even though there are more photos to come, they could be slightly more exciting. But these photos, for example, this starting one with Rey, it doesn't show too much more apart from her being on Arc 2 with Luke, and they're in a bit more of the built-up area rather than that initial area where we saw her meet Luke Skywalker for the first time. Uh, apart from this, she is in the exact same clothes. It looks like she is looking at Luke in mid-conversation. It does. There's not really too much you can take from this photo. And this photo is slightly more interesting because we see Rey looking at Luke. And this could very well be Luke Skywalker's little home or little house. I don't know what you want to call it. But it could be the place of where he sleeps. I mean, the interesting thing I thought about on this island is what does Luke really have to do? What, what does he eat? Just all of those questions. Uh, because as you know uh, from The Force Awakens and just the shots of this place, it is a very primitive place. Uh, it is, a, is one of the first remnants of the Jedi. So it's not exactly Coruscant level technology. It is just made out of, you know, stone. But as I was saying, this is probably where Luke stays or somewhere where he keeps, I don't know, those books that we saw in the trailer, the first Jedi books. And this is most likely Rey here learning that her hero isn't what she thought he would be. 
Now the next photo is of Finn and Rose Tico. Now the interesting thing that we've learned about Finn in The Last Jedi is that he is basically considering becoming an ex-good guy, as they say in the article. Uh, and Rose Tico is the one to kind of pull him back from the brink. But the reason why he kind of wants to get out of this after he wakes up is because he's just like, I want out of this and perhaps I can find Rey and we can go off together because it's all quite you know pretty intense what happened to him in the last film John Boyega has this to say about Finn it got really real for him and he just wants to get away and not be involved his intention in the first place was to go to the outer rim he was always brought back in the force awakens but this is his chance to get away everyone in space throughout the galaxy would have heard about the young Jedi who discovered her powers and defeated Kylo Ren and the young former stormtrooper who helped save the day He's a hero to people like Rose, who fight for the Resistance because their homes have been destroyed by the First Order. So compared to The Force Awakens, where Finn kind of boasted that he's a big deal, but he really wasn't, uh, for once now, in The Last Jedi, because of what happened in the last film, he really is a big deal, and that will be his relationships, especially with Rose Tico, who views him as a big deal. Now this photo really makes me smile, because this just highlights a lot of the original things that everybody loves about Star Wars that they kind of got rid of in the prequels, and that is the the character design and just the use of puppets really and you know just makeup and everything like that that they have brought back in this new trilogy and this very cute looking thing here that is sat next to Chewie is known as a Porg and they are apparently everywhere on the island where Luke Skywalker is but there is another alien life form and these very strange looking creatures are known as the caretakers now Ryan Johnson says that they're kind of these sort of fish bird type aliens who live on the island they've been there for thousands of years and they essentially keep up the structures on the island they're all female and I wanted them to feel like a remote sort of living little nunnery so I think that's really cool that they have these aliens on the island who have been keeping all the structures up and running for thousands of years uh, so it's gonna be really cool to see what interaction they have with the main characters in the new film now with Snoke not being a hologram in The Last Jedi unlike he was in The Force Awakens we'll actually get to see him in the flesh on the screen but just like the Emperor and how he had the Imperial Guards Snoke will have Praetorian Guards and I have to say they look really kick-ass Ryan Johnson says that the Emperor's Guards were very formal and you always get the sense that they could fight but they didn't they looked like they were more ceremonial and you never really got to see them in action the praetorians my brief to the costume designer michael kaplan was that those guys have to be more like samurai they have to be built to move and you have to believe that they could step forward and engage if they have to they have to seem dangerous so these are Snoke's personal bodyguards and it's going to be seriously cool to see what they have to offer in the new film. Let me know what you think of them in the comments below. I just hope that we do get to see a lot of action with them because that is what Ryan Johnson is teasing. Especially how he's comparing to the Imperial Guards who did actually just stand there. And they were more of a ceremonial piece just standing by the elevator to the place where the Emperor chilled in the previous films. Now this is a really cool look at Kylo Ren of his scar on his face. And I have to love how they've changed it in this film. They've made it a lot more longer going down his neck and that is just brutal it really does demonstrate how ray could have actually killed him if the lightsaber cut like an inch or two more deep uh considering that is a lightsaber cut and it's going all the way down his face down his neck that is just absolutely brutal and i have to say kylo ren looks really emotional here his eyes look it could just be the lighting but his eyes look really welled up with tears so maybe this is like another moment where he's got darth vader's helmet there and he's trying to get a response from maybe his force ghost who knows what the heck's gonna happen in this film but either way maybe he, he's just in a bit of conflict here and it's gonna be super interesting to see what this scene is all about but let me know what you think is happening in this scene in the comments below now this is a picture of canto bright and this is a place where finn and rose's mission takes them to this glamorous galactic getaway a city of light in games where fortunes are won and lost now if any of you know what nar shadar is like i feel like this is the more posh version of that world nar shadar is basically this massive gambling world but a cesspit for all kinds of scum and villainy really and all kinds of other rough species and characters but anyway if you know what Narshadar is you'll know exactly what I'm saying this seems like they're, the way they're putting it across uh, to us is that this is kind of just like Narshadar in terms of gambling and everything like that it is a much more glamorous getaway than the cesspit of Narshadar but that is all I've got time to talk about today guys there is a couple more photos but I'll leave them in the links below to the articles uh, they're just not these are the photos that I was saying that aren't you know there's not too much more to talk about 
but I'll leave them down below. There's just of John Boyega and Poe Dameron in a ship just posing as if they're firing something. And then there's another photo of a new First Order ship known as the TIE Silencer. But if you did enjoy this video, guys, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button as it really does help me out. And maybe subscribe if you're new to this channel. But apart from that, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you always.